Hey guys, Mr. McKinney here, just going through U substitution, which is quite possibly the most important single video that you're going to watch all year. Um, U substitution is used on almost every integral problem on the AP exam. So if you see an integral, you will likely be using U substitution. All right, so first let's talk about why we need U substitution or why we would use U substitution, like what types of problems it's going to help us solve. So let's look at how we would do this problem without using U substitution. So I've got 2x times x squared minus 6 dx. I'm taking the integral of that with respect to x. Now, we don't have a product rule for integrals. So right off the bat, there's no way to integrate this. But we could distribute. So we could make it the integral of 2x cubed minus 12x dx. I don't really need parentheses here because the dx and the integral are a grouping symbol together. So now I can take the indefinite integral using the power rule for each of these and then the difference rule. So it's going to become 2x to the fourth over 4 minus 12x squared over 2 plus c. Um, this would reduce down to 1 half x to the fourth. This would reduce to 6x squared. And remember, anytime you're doing an indefinite integral, you need to have a plus c because you could have any constant, and when you take the derivative, it would go away. So this problem could be done without u substitution. You would have to simplify it first, so multiply it out, and then you could take the integral of each piece and then add them together, or in this case, subtract. Now, this problem could also be done with u substitution. We're going to talk about when you have to use u substitution. Because this one could be done without it, or it could be done with it. But most problems, you're going to have to use u substitution. So if an integral does not perfectly match one of our integral formulas, then you're going to have to use u substitution. You must use u substitution. And I added this slide because in previous years, I've had students be like, oh, I didn't know I had to use u sub on that one. Oh, I didn't know I had to use u sub on that one. Like, when do we know when we have to use u sub? And the answer is basically always. Unless the integral perfectly matches one of our formulas, then you're going to have to use u substitution. And what I'm referring to by our formulas are all of these that were covered back in unit 6. So the most important one is the power rule. This is the one that you're going to use most often when you add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Um, but there's a lot of different rules that you're going to need. So you have all the trig rules that you should have memorized, the exponential and log rules, um, and then, then again the power rule. So this is the one that shows up the most. But if your problem does not perfectly match one of these formulas, then you have to use u substitution and make it perfectly match one of these formulas. So for example, I can use this problem, or I can do this problem with u substitution. And the way u substitution works is you basically use algebra tricks to rewrite the original problem so that it will match one of our formulas. In this case, I'm going to try to match the power rule formula. So I need it to be the integral of ax to the n dx. Or really, in this case, I'm going to try to make it be ax, sorry, a u to the n du. So instead of x to the n dx, I'm going to be using u, because we're doing u substitution. So I need to try to make this problem look like this, because this is something I know how to take the integral of. I know how to take the integral of a u to the n du. It's going to be a u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. So this is a rule I know. It came from this slide. This doesn't match that. So I have to do algebra manipulation to make this look like this. And the way we're going to do that is with what's called u substitution. So we're going to pick a function and make it u. Now, kids ask, how do you know what to make u? And there's not a simple answer. Um, it's usually like the inside function, and you'll see what I'm talking about later on. But sometimes you just have to try different u's and see which one ends up working. So for this problem, we're going to say that u is equal to x squared minus 6. And then I'm going to figure out what the derivative of that would be. So what would du be if u is equal to x squared minus 6? So if I took the derivative of x squared minus 6, I would get 2x dx. So we're taking the derivative of u with respect to x. Now, 
some of you guys may, or let me back up a little bit. What I probably should have said is that we're taking the derivative of u with respect to x. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be 2x. And then from there, I can solve by multiplying the dx over. So in this case, if I differentiate with respect to x, I can rewrite this equation as du equals 2x dx. Now, in my problem, I have 2x dx already. So this part that I'm boxing right here is really just my du. And this u, or sorry, x squared minus 6 is really just u. So I'm going to rewrite, first I'm going to just switch the order. So I'm going to rewrite it as x squared minus 6 times 2x dx. I'm just going to move the 2x over here so you guys can see what's happening. So now I'm going to say, okay, well, we have the integral of u, and then 2x dx is du. Now this matches my power rule formula. So now I can actually take the integral. So when I take the integral of u, this is like u to the first power, so the integral would become u squared over 2 plus c. Now, to say that the integral of 2x times x squared minus 6 is u squared over 2 plus c, that doesn't make sense because my original equation was dealing with x's. So after you do the integration, you're going to substitute your u equation back in. So this x squared minus 6 needs to be put back in. So x squared minus 6 over 2 plus c. Sorry, x squared minus 6 squared, because it's u squared divided by 2. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, wait a minute, that doesn't look the same as what we had before. Because if you go back to this slide, we said it should be 1 half x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus some constant. Now, if I multiply this equation out, x squared minus 6 times x squared minus 6, I would get x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 36. And if I divide that whole thing by 2, I am going to have 1 half x to the fourth, and I am going to have 6x squared. Now, this plus 18 would get combined with your constant. So this c and the c in the other problem would be different, but it doesn't really matter since we don't know what they are yet anyway. So this is equivalent to what we got before. Now, on this problem, I wouldn't recommend using u substitution. I recommend just multiplying it out and doing like we did on the first slide. But if you have this very similar problem, 2x times x squared minus 6 to the 7th, this problem becomes much more doable with u substitution. In theory, I could multiply out x squared minus 6 times x squared minus 6 times x squared minus 6 seven times. And then I could take that answer and I could multiply it by 2x, and I would have like, I don't know, nine terms or eight terms, and I could take the integral of each one. Now, technically, I would get the right answer, but I would run out of time on the AP exam. So I'm going to use u substitution. So I'm going to pick the same u function as before. The only difference is instead of just having u, this time I'm going to have u to the seventh power. So off to the side, I'm going to say, okay, for this problem, u equals x squared minus 6, just like before. And then du dx would be 2x, and then du would be 2x dx. Now, like I said, I should have showed it this way the first time. Most of you guys are going to get to the point where you just skip this middle step and you go straight from u to du, and just remember that there's a dx on the other side. Okay, so again, u is x squared minus 6 du is 2x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this one so the 2x is next to the dx, so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So x squared minus 6 to the 7th times 2x dx. All right, now we're going to use u substitution. So instead of this function, I'm going to substitute in u. But it's not just u, it's u to the 7th power. And then instead of 2x dx, I'm going to substitute in du, because that's what du is equal to. Now, this matches the power rule formula, so I can take the integral. It's going to become u to the 8th over 8 plus c. And again, I can't stop here. I need to take my u equation and plug it back in. So the answer for this one would be x squared minus 6 
to the eighth power divided by eight plus c. Or you could write it as one eighth times x squared minus six to the eighth power plus c. Don't stop with u in your answer because there wasn't a u in the original problem. Make sure you plug your u equation back in before you box your answer, before you say it's your answer. All right, let's take a look at another example. So we've got the integral of x squared times the square root of 5 plus 2x cubed dx. Now again, a lot of times when you do u substitution, the u substitution is going to be, like the u is going to be whatever is inside the root here. So u is equal to 5 plus 2x cubed. If I took the derivative of u with respect to x, the constant would go away, and I would have 6x squared, and I can move the dx over, so I'd get du equals 6x squared dx. Now, I don't have 6x squared dx this time, so we're going to have to do things a little bit differently. So I know that eventually I need to have 6x squared dx. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 6. Now, I'm not allowed to just randomly multiply by 6. I am allowed to randomly multiply by 1. So I'm going to multiply by 1, but it's going to be a weird-looking one. It's not going to be a regular one. It's going to be... 1 6 times 6. 1 6 times 6 is 1. So I can multiply by 1 6 as long as I also, also multiply by 6, because then I'm really just multiplying by 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 6 on the inside and multiply the 1 6 on the outside. So I've multiplied this whole thing by 1. But what I've done is I've allowed myself to get the du on the inside, since du was 6x squared dx. So for this problem, I'm now going to bring the 1 6 down. I'm going to rewrite my integral. So I have the square root of 5 plus 2x cubed, and then I have 6x squared dx. So I have 1 6 times the integral of, and now I've got the square root of this function, which I called u. So I'm going to say 1 6 times the square root of u, and instead of 6x squared dx, I'm going to say that's du. And then I need to write this as a power, so 1 6 times the integral of u to the 1 half du. Now it matches my power rule formula, so now I can finally take the integral. So the integral of 1 6 u to the 1 half du, the integral of that, would be 1 6, and then I'm going to do u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c. Now there's a lot of ways to think about what this dividing by 3 halves is going to do, but I'm going to think about dividing fractions as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this would really be 1 sixth times 2 thirds times u to the 3 halves plus c. So I can cancel this out, and it's going to end up being 1 ninth u to the 3 halves plus c. Now again, I don't want to leave my answer with u, so there's a lot of different ways I could write my answer. So I'll switch to green. So I could say 1 ninth and then just plug in u and say 5 plus 2x cubed to the 3 halves power plus c. That'd be one way to write my answer. Or I could say 1 ninth times the square root of 5 plus 2x cubed cubed plus c. So whether I write my answer with a exponent or a root and an exponent, either way is fine. All right. Um, so again, find your u, find your du, and go from there. We're going to pick back up on this problem in the next slide, and I'm going to show a different way to do it, and it's going to be what I call the math Excel method. So we're going to do the same problem um, and then do some more practice. So again, when do you have to use u substitution? Basically every time. So unless your integral perfectly matches one of the formulas, then you're going to have to use u substitution. So make sure you guys memorize all these formulas, because if it doesn't perfectly match one of them, you have to use u substitution. All right, hope this was helpful.